Genesis chapter 1 through to chapter 2 verse 4a. In the beginning God created the heavens and the earth. The earth was without form and void and darkness was over the face of the deep and the spirit of God was hovering over the face of the waters. And God said, let there be light. And there was light. And God saw that the light was good and and God separated the light from the darkness. God called the light day and the darkness he called night. And there was evening and there was morning the first day and God said let there be an expanse in the midst of the waters and and let it separate the waters from the waters and God made the expanse and and separated the waters that were under the expanse from the waters that were above the expanse and it was so and God called the expanse heaven and there was evening and there was morning the second day And God said, let the waters under the heavens be gathered together in one place and and let the dry land appear. And it was so. God called the dry land earth and, and the waters that were gathered together he called seas. And God saw that it was good. And God said, let the earth sprout vegetation, plants yielding seed, and fruit trees bearing fruit in which, uh, in which is their seed, each according to its kind on the earth. And it was so. And God brought forth vegetation, plants yielding seed according to their own kinds, and, and trees bearing fruit in which is their seed, each according to its kind. And God saw that it was good. And there was evening and the morning the third day and God said let there be lights in the expanse of the heavens to separate the day from the night and let them be for signs and for seasons and for days and years and let them be lights in the expanse of the heavens to give to uh, to give light upon the earth and it was so and God made two great lights the greater light to rule the day and the lesser light to rule the night and, and the stars And God set them in the expanse of the heavens to give light on the earth, to rule over the day and over the night, and and to separate the light from the darkness. And God saw that it was good. And there was evening and there was morning, the fourth day. And God said, let the waters swarm with swarms of living creatures, and let birds fly above the earth across the expanse of the heavens. So God created the great sea creatures and and every living creature that moves with which the waters swarm according to their kind and every winged bird according to its kind. And God saw that it was good. And God blessed them saying, be fruitful and multiply and fill the waters and the seas and, and let birds multiply on the earth. And there was evening and there was morning the fifth day. And God said, let the earth bring forth living creatures according to their kind, livestock and stock and creeping things and beasts of the earth according to their kind. And it was so. And God made the beast of the earth according to their kinds and the livestock according to their kinds and, and everything that creeps on the ground according to its kind. And God saw that it was good. Then God said, let us make man in our image after our likeness. And let them have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the light birds of the air and, and over the livestock and over all the earth and, and over every living, every creeping thing that creeps on the earth. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God, he created him. Male and female, he created them. And God blessed them. And God said to them, be fruitful and multiply and fill the earth and subdue it and and have dominion over the fish of the seas and over the birds of the air and, and over every living creature that moves on the earth. And God said, behold, I have given you every plant yielding seed that is on the face of the earth and every tree with seed of in its fruit. You shall have them for food. And to every beast of the earth and to every bird of the heavens and to everything that creeps on the earth, everything that has the breath of life, I have given every green plant for food. And it was so. 
And God saw everything that he had made, and behold, it was very good. And there was evening, and there was morning, the sixth day. Thus the heavens and the earth were finished, and all the hosts of them. And on the seventh day God finished his work that he had done, and he rested on the seventh day from all his work that he had done. So God blessed the seventh day and made it holy, because on it God rested from all his work that he had done in creation. These are the generations of the heavens and the earth when they were created. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our second lesson from Acts chapter 2, verse 14, and then continuing from verse 22. Peter, standing with the eleven, lifted up his voice and addressed them. Men of Israel, hear these words. Jesus of Nazareth, a man attested to you by God with mighty works and wonders and signs that God did through him in your midst, as you yourselves know, This Jesus, delivered up according to the definite plan and foreknowledge of God, you crucified and killed by the hands of lawless men. God raised him up, losing the the pangs of death, because it was not possible for him to be held by it. For David says concerning him, I saw the Lord always before me, for he is at my right hand that I may not be shaken. Therefore my heart was glad and my tongue rejoiced. My flesh also will dwell in hope, for you will not abandon my soul to Hades, nor let your Holy One see corruption. You have made known to me the paths of life. You have made me full of gladness with your presence. Brothers, I may say to you with confidence about the patriarch David, that he both died and was buried, And his tomb is with us to this day. Being therefore a prophet and knowing that God had sworn with an oath to him that he would not, he would set one of his descendants on his throne. He foresaw and spoke about the resurrection of Christ, that he was not abandoned to Hades, nor did his flesh see corruption. This Jesus God raised up and and of that we all are witnesses. Being therefore exalted at the right hand of God and and having received from the Father the promise of the Holy Spirit, he has poured out this that you may, you you yourselves, that you yourselves are seeing and, and hearing. For David did not ascend into the heavens, but he himself says, the Lord said to my Lord, sit at my right hand until I make your enemies your footstool. Let all the house of Israel therefore know for certain that God has made him both Lord and Christ, this Jesus whom you crucified. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. I invite you to rise as we read the, uh, uh, the, the Holy Gospel from Matthew chapter 28. Now the eleven disciples went to Galilee to the mountain to which Jesus had directed them. And when they saw him, they worshipped him, but some doubted. And Jesus came and said to them, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all that I have commanded you. And behold, I am with you always to the end of the age. The Gospel of Christ. We join together now in confessing our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. Uh, it printed on the back of the hymnal, the uh, back page of the hymnal, if you, if you need it. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, 
the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. You may be seated. Please turn again to page two of your worship uh, folder, uh, and we're going to sing the one verse of Holy, Holy, Holy. unto you in peace from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Our text is the gospel reading for today from Matthew 28. I'm going to read a portion of that to you again. Now the eleven disciples went to Galilee to the mountain to which Jesus had directed them. And when they saw him they worshipped him but, but some doubted. And Jesus came and said to them, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all that I have commanded you. And behold, I am with you always to the end of the age. The Gospel of our Lord. It was about 80 years ago, during World War II, that J.B. Phillips, a noted uh, Anglican theologian who was famous for his paraphrase of the New Testament at that time, asked a group of university students in his class to answer a question off the top of their head. This was the question. Do you think that God understands radar? Uh, radar had just been invented at that particular time during the war and was a real boon to the, to the Allied soldiers. Well, they all quickly answered and said no. And they, they began to laugh about the ridiculousness of the answer that they had given. Later, uh, Phillips observed, their off-the-top-of-the-head answer showed me what I suspected. And that is that in the back of people's minds, is the idea that God must be some old character, some ancient being who's really out of touch with the modern world in which we live. Well, that was 80 years ago. I wonder what people are thinking today. After all the advancements and the, and the discoveries that have been made since, well, since radar was first discovered. All the wonders of space, all the, the, the world of microsciences, the, the development of artificial intelligence, and, and the list could go on and on and on. Maybe God really is outdated for our day and age. Maybe he's impotent with all of the knowledge and the power that, that human beings have in our day to day. Is there anything that God really is able to offer to our sophisticated, computer-run civilization in which we live now in the, in the 21st century? What's so great about God? Well, that's the theme for our worship today. This Sunday, throughout most of Christendom, is known as Trinity Sunday. It's a day in which we remember who God is and what God has done to deserve our worship and our allegiance. It's a day to declare to the world just how great God is. What's so great about God? Well, his very person is such that he is far beyond our ability to comprehend. The first lesson that we read today reminds us that our God is the creator God, the one who made the heavens and the earth, who, who made everything out of nothing. The Old Testament also reminds us that this God is one God. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one. 
And the gospel reading adds to our understanding of who God is. It speaks of God as the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. One God, three persons, triune, three and one, one and three. And Ethan in confirmation class would say, that doesn't make sense to me. And he would say, that's illogical for us to be thinking that way. And he's right. But then what would you expect from a great God who is far above and beyond our human way of understanding, our wisdom and, and our knowledge and understanding? Reminds me of what St. Paul said when he said, Oh, the depths of the riches of the wisdom and knowledge of God. How, how unsearchable are his judgments and his paths from finding out. Who knows the mind of the Lord? For from him and through him and to him are all things. To him be the glory forever. Not being able to comprehend his being. All we can do is join the angels and the archangels and the saints in heaven and singing as we did. Holy, holy, holy. Lord God almighty, merciful and mighty. God in three persons. Blessed Trinity. What's so great about God? Well, he's far above us and our understanding. But also what he does is also far above our ab ability to reason. The amazing, the amazing accomplishments of humanity that I mentioned near the beginning of this message, they all involve discovering something that is already in our world, in our universe. Science discovers nuclear energy and continues to learn to harness its power. Science discovers the, the power of concentrated light and, and now we use lasers to perform cataract surgery and, and to do all other kinds of surgeries as well. They have and continue to, 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 to discover new medical drugs that, that assist us in our healing and, and many of us here are recipients of those kind of blessings. And, and who isn't looking forward to the day when they discover that, that vaccine? in order that we can put this whole coronavirus thing behind us. And scientists say to us that this is only beginning. And you can only guess at the number of discoveries that are going to come in the future. Some say they're limitless. But yet in this whole process, humans will always remain the discoverer. God alone is the creator. He put it all there for us to discover and to use. What's so great about God? We read it. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. You know, if people are to be praised for their discoveries, and of course they really should be, then how much more should we join with the psalmist in praising this great creator God of ours? How many manifold are your works, O Lord? In wisdom, you have made them all. All of this in itself should overwhelm us about how great God is. But we learn also from Holy Scripture more about him. We come to realize that really the greatest and the most amazing thing about God is his love for creation. Now I know a lot of people are going to just categorically reject that statement of mine. They're going to point to all the pain and all the evil and all the death in the world. And maybe they're even going to point to this coronavirus thing and say, if God is love, how could any of that stuff happen? And I have to say to you, I really don't know. I don't fully understand just why God does what he does and why he allows what he allows. And, and I'm willing to admit that to you. But this is something I do know. That God demonstrated his love for us in a way that overrides all of these questions that a person might have. He himself came into our world to deliver us from the most devastated and destructive problem of all. And that's the problem of sin. The problem that is at the root of every other single problem that we experience in this world. And it's so beautifully wrapped up for us in one little verse where Jesus says, God so loved the world 
that he gave his one and only son, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. As the hymn says, love so amazing, love so divine. You know, it's much easier for us to understand God's wrath. It's much easier for us to be able to understand why God would be angry. We can understand why God would be angry when, when, when people just kind of reject him. You can understand why, why God might be angry and want to punish people when they so eagerly disobey him or, or that when they live as, as if he doesn't exist. Because if you see, if we were God, this is why we understand it, because if we were God, we would very quickly come to the point and say, that's it. I'm throwing it all out. I'm going to start again. But God didn't. And God doesn't. In exchange for humanity's sin, God sent his son. And though the people of this world poured hatred upon him and they hung him on a cross to die, God used their evil as a means to supply forgiveness to every person who responds to him in faith. How great is God in Jesus Christ? God forgives you all your sin. In Jesus Christ, God has showered you with his love. In Jesus Christ, we see the greatness of God. We see the greatness of his grace, the greatness of his mercy, and it's all there for you. That, my friends, is what's so great about God. And that greatness has been revealed to us by the third person in this Holy Trinity, the, the Holy Spirit. Without the Holy Spirit, we would not be believing it. But with his power, we not only see the greatness in the universe that he has lived, created, but we also see his love for us. And in his power, we now live in this world so that we can share that good word of love and life with other people. As his church, as he calls us to do, making disciples of all nations, baptizing and teaching everything that he has commanded them with all glory and power belonging to him. And then this wonderful truth that he's with us, that he's for us now and forever. That's what's so great about our God. Amen. And now may the peace of God that passes all our understanding keep your hearts and minds centered in Christ Jesus. Amen. Yeah. We join